Joe Biden presses on with preparations for his time in office. He's expected to announce members of a coronavirus task force on Monday. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. Who, who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. President Trump plays golf again. On Twitter, he continues to claim, without evidence, that the election was stolen. Joe Biden has met every British prime minister for the last 40 years, but questions are being asked about his future relationship with Boris Johnson, a man he's previously described as a clone of Donald Trump. There is far more that unites the uh, government of this country and uh, government in, in Washington at any, any time, that, at any stage, than, than divides us. Should we have a little look at uh, some of the front pages in today's papers for you this morning? Lots of front pages still focus on the US presidential election. Uh, pressure grows on Trump to go quietly is what the Daily Telegraph has got in their headline. They're reporting uh, former Republican President George W. Bush congratulating Joe Biden on his win, saying the election was fundamentally fair. And I'm sure you recognise the photograph there. That's the Queen who was at the Cenotaph yesterday for a socially distanced Remembrance Sunday. The Guardian predicts a turbulent transition for Joe Biden to the White House, but says the president-elect is determined to hit the ground running. The newspaper says his priority is a 12-member task force to deal with the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the Metro reports that current U.S. President Donald Trump is fuming and uh, refusing to accept defeat following that election result. Been playing golf for the last couple of days. Trump the Grump is their headline. And in a similar vein, the New York Times says, as Mr Biden prepares to enter office, President Trump refuses to concede. Well, the big news of the past week has undoubtedly been the US election. And in London, uh, there's a large American expat community who followed every moment of the count, like many of us, and the victory of President-elect Joe Biden. Well, we spoke to a few of them about the result. As you'd expect, the reaction was mixed. Kamala Harris uh, in the White House is just a really enormous thing um, and I feel like I've witnessed history. I'm disappointed because I think Donald Trump has done a lot of good in the past few years as the president. I was walking down a really busy street and a bunch of people around me got the alert at the same time and like five of us were American we just started celebrating in the middle of the street. And finally, there have been celebrations in the vice president-elect Kamala Harris's ancestral village in India. The people of Thulasendrapuram, a small village in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu, woke up early to celebrate the first South Asian American to win the second highest U.S. office. They are carrying portraits of the vice president-elect. Residents gathered around with fireworks, also taking part in prayers. Her mother, uh, Kamala Harris's mother, emigrated from India to the U.S. age 19.